What we're going to go over right now is how to progress your life skill gear all the way to soft cap. So let's say you guys are starting off from the very beginning and you have no life skill gear. How do you go about gearing up from there, right? Let's start off right here. Okay, starting goals. So when you're starting life skilling, you're going to have a few goals. First one is going to get master one gather, full try or tet logia gears to start off and set up your workshops. So when you're starting off your life skilling journey, you want to first decide how you want to go about life skilling. Are you going to do the traditional gathering and cooking or are you doing something else? Because if you're going for bartering, you don't need much gear. You can actually go with zero life skill gear and be fine. But even with bartering, I recommend having life skill gear for the percentage life skill XP, which is also really good. So the most money you're going to make from life skilling is when you have a combination of things working together. For example, gathering and cooking or gathering and alchemy or everything like you'll get some materials for alchemy as well just stockpile them and eventually get into alchemy uh, that's the best way to go about it because cooking is going to be that consistent money maker which is time proven so what you want to do in the beginning is aim for master one gathering you could stop at artisan but that's lazy just get the master one it only takes a little bit longer it's worth it try logia tent logia gear you can enhance it yourself or you can just buy them. They're not too expensive. Let's say you want to first get into gathering. I would recommend you have at least a little bit of life skill gear. Like even if it's just duo, the most important thing from these accessories when you're power leveling gathering is going to be that percentage life skill XP. That is really important to speed things up. Mastery is also good, but you're going to be using magic tools instead of using our life skill gear. Once you have over like 700, I think that's when you switch over. But you guys all know bear. This is the uh, herb rotation here where you're gonna get the most amount of XP for the shortest period of time. This is a really good place to power level. I recommend you power level all the way to master one. And for the gear, either enhance it yourself or just buy it. For your workshops, uh, we'll talk about that, but make sure you have your worker nodes set up as well. Getting your potatoes, getting your chicken, all that good stuff to get you started on cooking, your wheat and stuff down here in Heidel, these are, are really good to have. Make sure you get all that set up as soon as you can. I mean, it's not a deal breaker to have these worker nodes, but obviously free money is free money, right? So why not? Let's say that you did all of this. So you should be at now, you should be at M1 gathering. You should have a stockpile of food. So whatever level of cooking you're at, that's fine. You can always power level it. So how I did my cooking, let's talk about cooking real quick. Cooking to guru one. So when I did mine, I stacked up as many buffs as I could and I did one second cooking. Every day I was cooking for about two to three hours of uh, one second cooking and the rest was AFK cooking. The things that I cooked was uh, obviously pickled veggies and you can make the vinegar yourself. You can do vinegar and then use that to uh, do pickled veggies. Uh, date palm wine were really good. These give like a thousand XP per cook. Um, obviously the date palm nodes are all throughout Medea and Valencia over here. The reason I did date palm wine was because it's uh, also part of uh, Valencia meal, which I was uh, later cooking. Uh, you can do like fig pies, which is also for Valencia meal. Basically you want to do those meals that go into the main meal you want to cook for your guru boxes. And obviously look, you're not going to stick with one meal. You're going to be cooking a variety of them because as the price has dropped for one meal, others will go up and you want to capitalize on that. So these were what I cooked. And then at like around master 18 is when I did Valencia meals because I did that RNG box opening on stream made about a billion. And then I put all that into buying the remaining sub meals and just cooking it all and went to Guru one very quickly. Those uh, meals like Valencia meals and Calfion meals, Balanos meals, those give you a lot of XP. So these are all the things you'd want to do. Definitely have your workshop set up to have your cooking utensils being produced. Like I used Glish. This was pretty easy to do. Uh, just get a tool workshop level three. You got your utensils. With my workers, I was able to make um, two every hour. So when I was doing it, I had two workers and um, that was two workshops going. Every day I made about 96 was it 98 you know close to 100 of these utensils every day that's like 100 mil a day but i didn't sell them i stockpiled them for the most part i did eventually sell some for cash but 
If you look at my uh, uh, storage here, I got like over 400 of them ready to go when I want to get back into life skill. But how you go about uh, setting these up is uh, here are the materials required for it. You need a uh, blackstone powder, uh, usable scantling, polished stone, melted iron shard, right? So for the iron, you get some of the iron when you're mining at Pilgrims for rough stone, but you can also get the node that's right next door here uh, to Glish, that is Southern uh, Cienaga. And also you can get different nodes around like uh, over here, but iron nodes were never really worth it for me because like these are always sitting on the marketplace. Like for example, the melted shards, they're always sitting there so you could just buy it if you want. If you're on NA, you could buy the logs as well usually, but these fill up pretty quickly. Like if you put a pre-order, they will fill up. So me personally, I did all my lumbering in Ash Forest. That was my favorite spot, but there's a lot of sp uh, spots for uh, lumber all throughout this area here. And for rough stone, you definitely want to be at Pilgrim's Haven. This is the best combination of XP and money. So you want to be master one gathering, let's say 700 plus mastery set up worker nodes and workshops. So you need those utensils for cooking and stuff, but you can like buy every single tools workshop in the game and actually make a lot of money per day if you can sustain it. It takes a lot of hours of gathering every day if you have a lot of those workshops. So it's not the best option for, for you if you're not gathering over four hours a day or something, but have at least a few going so you have those getting stacked up. You wanna burn all your energy at Pilgrims you can set up a residence here at Sandgrain Bazaar and do your cooking here while you're AFKing for your energy to come back and then go back to mining once you have energy. From this 700 mastery, um, you wanna take it all the way to soft cap, right? So soft cap life skill gear is basically full tri manos, accessories, pet clothes, and tools. So for the tools, you wanna to get your gathering clothes, then your main tools, that is, uh, probably pickaxe and probably lumbering axe if you're getting your old your own logs for your accessories you want to go me personally you know i started off with the belt and shit but i didn't really need it because i had a lot of weight so let me show you the accessories here the belt gives you weight if you look at the item effect it gives you weight and mastery right so let's say a tri belt is uh 140 weight 75 mastery but when you look at the rings and uh the other stuff it's only 10 mastery less but it gives you eight percent life skill xp which is huge so my mistake was going on uh, belt and neck first but honestly if i redid it i would have went um the rings earrings first and then or you know start off with probably the necklace then rings and earrings and then belt i would go clothes first tool and then the accessory so let's do a recap what you're doing after you power level to master one gathering and after you had a full try or tet low gear gear, you want to start doing pilgrims and you want to start doing your workshops for your cooking utensils because you want to do a lot of cooking after and just stack those up in your mar marketplace warehouse. So you'll be uh, doing lumbering if you want, or you can just buy it, pre-order it. You can get your iron from doing pilgrims and your nodes, or you can buy it. And your rough stone you want to get manually here at Pilgrim's Haven. And while you're in between your energy if you're not pumping your uh, energy pots you're not chugging them down you don't have pay to win energy pots you want to get a residence here at sand grain bazaar and just do your cooking here okay well, doing that will get you good money depending on how much time you're spending gathering you can manage a lot of workshops or just a few the more you uh, have going you can sell the extra cooking utensils for cash now they're going for one mil again so all the way until you get full try manos and shit you can do that and even after you get full tri manos, you can keep doing the same damn thing. Or if you want like raw silver, you can start gathering uh, lion meat, scorpion meat, snake meat, whatever you need for your meals. Or you can go to deers for raw silver if you just want to, you know, fluid collect blood. Uh, somewhere south of, uh, I think it's around here, the deers, where it's a lot of raw silver. So anyway, you don't sell your rough stone. You keep them all. You grind them down with processing. All of that rough stone, all of the logs are being processed. You chop the logs for usable scantling. You uh, grind the rough stone to polished stone. You can buy the black stone powder or make your own by grinding down uh, useless crystals from abandoned iron mine. And you get the iron from nodes or mining. So all that together, you can make these uh, cooking utensils. I'll show you guys what you need exactly right here. 20 uh, polished stone, 5 scantling, 20 uh, melted iron shard, and 14 black stone powder. 
So that's basically what you do aside from, you know, butchering for meat and cooking. As we discussed with the power leveling for cooking, you can make like vinegar, pickled veggies, date palm wine, fig pies, and whatever sub meals you want you want for your main meals. And also Khan's heart. And G28 gathering is goal. And if you guys want to uh, get a more in-depth explanation of this, you should listen to that video I did with Jordan, uh, where we wargamed our strategy if we were to start over in BDO from fresh. It's basically get to gathering pilgrims and make cooking utensils. That's that's the TLDR here. <laughs>